Hey, welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining us. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make image variations with the OpenAI API. So we are inside of the number 10 image variation folder inside of the OpenAI folder inside of the AI Playground repository. And we're working inside this main.py file. We have an image. The image is less than four megabytes in size, and it is a square ratio, meaning the same width as the height. So it's like 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. So those are requirements of your input image. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to pipe an image through the OpenAI API, and it's going to take that image and generate a variation of it with AI. So let's go ahead and toggle close the left hand side so we can see our code a little bit better. And you'll notice this is a really simple example. It's only what do we have here like 11 lines of code. So the top is just the boilerplate, same as all the other videos. We got to bring in OpenAI and we have to create a client. Now that we have our client, we're going to go ahead and assign a variable response to the resulting object from this API call. We do the API call with the client.images.create underscore variation, and that is going to take a few arguments. The first one here, super important, is the image argument. We're going to set it equal to, and then we're going to use Python's built-in open method to actually open a local file. Now, if you remember, we have a file, bucky.png, in the same folder as this main.py file. So we just do a dot forward slash bucky.png inside of single quotes, and that'll point directly to that file. The next argument inside of this open method is the RB. That means read binary. It just means, hey, we're not dealing with text. We're dealing with an image. Images need to be read in bytes as binary so that we don't modify any of the original data for that image file. So that's what that is. It's just going to allow us to take that image and send it over to the API. Now, the next thing is the n equals one. This is just the variations like we had in the previous video. We are using Dolly 2 by default. You can't do this with Dolly 3, at least not yet. So I think you could potentially do more than one variation, but for this example, we're just going to stick with one. So n equals one just means give us one variation as output to this API call. The next thing is going to be the size of the output image. So we're giving it 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels as input. So we want to go ahead and get the same output for our variation image. And that's it. We're going to traverse down to this response object. It's got a data property that gives us access to a list. We're going to access the first element inside the list. That's going to be an object with a property called URL. And when we access that URL, it's actually going to give us the URL to the CDN or the, the hosted version of this generated image. Just like before, these images are only available at that URL for a limited time. I think it's like one hour. So make sure that you download that image if you like it or you upload it somewhere else if you want to use it elsewhere on the web. So we assign the result of that to the image underscore URL variable. And then we go ahead and print it to our console. So Python main.py. Wait for it to send us back this image and print out the URL. And then we'll check it out in our browser. And here we are. So I'm going to control click on PC. It's command click on Mac, I believe, on this URL. We'll go to the browser over here. And there's our variation. So I, I don't know if I showed you the original image. Let me go ahead and toggle back and show you the original. Here's the original. You probably recognize this image. The man, the myth, the legend himself, Bucky Roberts. And here's the variation. Original variation. Similar color of a t-shirt, similar type of t-shirt. The hat is on backwards in the variation. Definitely some differences, but this is pretty cool. Kind of fun. A little creepy, but pretty interesting. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this, and it's only a few lines of code. So definitely be sure and check this out. Mess around with it, and let us know what you come up with in the comments. We'd love to hear how you're using these tutorials to create projects of your own. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for tuning in. So glad to have you all here and can't wait to see you in the next video. Until next time, peace.